How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And today, we're going to be talking about the 3.6 Pinnastar Chrysler engine that's in every Wrangler, Dodge Rams, the Vans, the Chargers, Chrysler vehicles. Today, we're going to be talking about the overheating issue that a lot of people think they have. And I want to explain a little bit about this engine and why it does this. Now, if you're having an overheating problem, I'm just going to address it right now. You're either going to have boiling uh, coolant, your Jeep is going to peg out, um, you're going to be able to smell antifreeze, and it's going to be leaking somewhere. Now, you'll have some other underlying issues if that happens, like the radiator busted. That's the number one problem with the Wranglers. Um, the radiator cap or the coolant jug, or another one is the thermostat sticking or the water pump. And usually if you address those all at one time, I know it's kind of expensive, but if you do that all at one time, it usually addresses the overheating issue in a Pinnastar engine. But today I'm going to be talking about something people freak out over, that their Jeep's not even overheating. I've seen people spend a lot of money on two core radiators, updated water pumps, lower thermostats which throws a check engine light code. I've seen people do so much stuff to the Pinnastar engine trying to get it to run at 180 and 190. Well, that's dang near impossible unless you get a tuner, lower the fans to a lower temperature um, and where they'll kick on lower because, as you know, the later Pinnastars and the Jeep JKs and stuff like that have electric fans. But here's the problem. A lot of people will buy a Wrangler and they're scared to death of it. And I, and I can understand why because when I first bought mine, I was scared because... Um, I actually have a Cherokee and us old school guys, we want our Jeep to run at 190 to 200, anything above that is starting to overheat to us. Um, even old cars and stuff like that is, you know, the old motors keeping them cool. They perform better and they do great and it keeps it from, uh, you know, blowing head gaskets and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to newer engines, like the 3.6 Pinnastar, it's a totally different animal. Now, these engines actually run a little bit hotter. A lot of people will freak out when they see 215, 220, um, 225, and 230. They'll freak out. They'll pull off the highway. They'll have it towed. Uh, they'll shut their vehicle off. They'll do all kinds of stuff, and they'll think it's overheating. Actually, this is actually a normal uh, thing for the Pinnastar to get that hot. Mine sees it on the trail you know, pretty good, uh, especially running 35s and stock gearing 321s, and I have all the weight on there. Um, on the trails, I do see, you know, 220, 225, sometimes 230. Um, but the thing is, you got to make sure, you know, your gauge is straight up and down or just a hair over. And when it gets up to 230, make sure you hear that fan kick on outside and it automatically goes right back down. Mine goes right back down to like 197 and it stays like 197, 215 for a while. And then when I'm climbing a hard hill or I'm wide open for a couple minutes, it will climb just a little bit, but it'll go back down. Now that is perfectly normal for the 3.6 Pinnastar. And a lot of people freak out about that. Um, there's actually a letter from like the Boltons or a mechanic or the engineer or whatever I'll put up here. Um, it's perfectly normal. And a lot of people have a hard time accepting that because the way I grew up that's overheating to me and honestly it's not overheating it's actually the way it's designed it's got aluminum heads and it's an aluminum block and everything's expanding at the same rate and honestly by now if it was you know overheating I should have blown head gaskets a long time ago because I have two Pinnastars um, and honestly they both run the same way now what I do see is it fluctuating that high right off the bat and a lot of times is there's a lot of stuff in front of the grill people put grill inserts on there they change the grill um, i'm very traditional i hate changing the grill on something especially a wrangler wrangler or a cherokee i keep my grills the same i don't go with the aftermarket stuff if you do that that's perfectly fine but a lot of those restrict air and it don't let it breathe and suck that fresh air in and cool that radiator down a lot of people will buy a cheap winch bumper They'll stick the winch on it. It'll be right over the radiator and the air actually deflects over it when you're driving down the road, especially on the highway and it will overheat instantly. And that's not good. 
uh, especially with light bars and stuff on cheap bumpers, it, they do the same thing. So what happens is they put all that stuff in front of the Jeep and it's not getting enough air. And what happens is it actually deflects over the whole opening of the radiator and goes over your hood, over the Jeep. And then you have overheating problems. Um, so you just got to watch stuff like that, like that, the inserts and stuff like that. So from anywhere from, you know, 220... 225 230 is perfectly normal for a Pentastar. Um, they do that for emission reasons. It supposedly burns everything off and keeps everything cleaner, and it's a lot better for the environment. And the new Chevy trucks, the motors, they run hotter too. Uh, brand new truck right off the lot runs at 220, 225, drops back down to 206, and it goes right back up. Especially on a hot day, you'll see 230. The gauge stays straight up and down or over just a little bit but it cools right back down. Nothing's boiling, nothing's wrong. Um, so just keep that in mind that things are changing, things are evolving, and everything's not going to stay the same. That's something I had to accept with the Pinstar engine. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a lot of engines out there that overheat, especially the older ones, because the sand was left in the head of, you know, where they did the castings or whatever. But the newer ones seem to be pretty good, and you're just going to chase your tail if you want it to run cooler. Honestly, I've not had a problem out of mine. I will mine, like I said, 35s, 321 gears for right now. It does fine. It don't overheat. It barely sees 230. But like I said, when I'm climbing up that steep right away or the coal pile we go to, it will hit 230. But as soon as it hits 230, it drops back down. The, the thermostat don't open until 206. And I do believe it depends what year you have, but the fans don't kick on till like 226. So I did confirm this with mine. Mine does kick on at actually about 225. So I just wanted to spread this information with you about the 3.6 Pentastar. Honestly, a lot of engines today will run a little bit warmer than the older engines in the past because of how they're built. You'll hear a lot of people talk about it on the forums like, oh no, my Jeep only sees this, this, and this. Uh, eventually they're not paying attention but eventually that jeep will hit 225 to 230 i've seen it um like i said i own two pentastars there's no way both of them have problems um, i don't smell antifreeze i don't have anything going on it's all pressured up and uh mine do that and they're perfectly fine they don't lose power actually my pentastar runs a lot better when it's warmer and these are the fastest engines that i've ever seen that warm up like it's it's starting to become winter time here in west virginia I can go out and start this uh, Wrangler that I have, and within like five minutes, the heater's hot and you're ready to go. And that's what I like about the Pentastar. It's ready to go. They don't have many flaws. They have like rocker arm flaws and the oil cooler housing cracks. But honestly, overall, this engine's a really good engine. It's a little bit doggish, but honestly, um, it's a really good durable engine. And I just wanted to spread that information with you because a lot of people I see on the forums on Facebook, it's a question that's asked every day, every day out through the week. I get comments sometimes, I get emails. It's perfectly normal for your Pentastar to run from 197 to 1 or 220 to 225 to 230. Now, when you're getting up to 250, 248, 245, you have an issue there. Um, it's not rare that I've seen it. I've seen it jump up there in other Jeeps before, but they jump right back down like right now. And that's the way it's supposed to be because you're, you know, you don't have a mechanical fan. You have an electric fan. So when I'm on the highway, my Wrangler don't even see 215. It's legit 197, 206. In town, setting at a red light, uh, it'll see like, you know, 210, 215. Now, if it's really hot and I'm on the trails creeping in low lock, I don't hear the fans on. It will creep up to 225, 230, and the fans will kick on, and it'll blow it right back down. Perfectly normal. Just want to spread that information with you, um, so don't freak out too much. Um, but you'll know when your Wrangler is overheating or your 3.6 pin start. You'll smell it, and it will boil, and that gauge will peg right out. Hope this helped you out. Hope it eased your mind at night when you go to bed. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friend.